What is your view on Elder Euronymous of Egan and other holy people who were not part of the official church over issues such as the calendar change or surgeonism? Well, it's a lot of, you're unpacking a lot here, but, uh, uh, you know, Elder Euronymous reposed in, in the 60s. I remember 68, I can't remember the exact date, but 68, I think. And, you know, the reality in Greece in 68 was right in the cups, cusp of a big change in the uh, world of old calendarists and uh, the old calendarists in Greece. So in the 70s, you have an explosion of schisms. Uh, end of the 60s and 70s is, is where it really takes off. <clears throat> and so I'm not sure what Elder Euronymous would have said about all that. I think that he, he did not have the extreme positions of the Matthewites, for instance. He didn't embrace gracelessness in the mysteries of the church in the uh, with the uh, new calendar. I, I think that he, he retained, um, as far as I know, I mean, I might be ignorant of some quotes or something people are going to present, but as far as I can see in his life, he avoided all of the uh, problematic positions that you find today among the more zealous old calendarists. And he, he was embraced by many people in the Church of Greece. Um, I don't think he was an ideologically driven uh, old calendarist. So at that time, you can still find quotations from somebody like St. Philotheus Zervakos, where he says the old calendar Christians are Christians, they're Orthodox Christians. And he's, he's basically pleading with the Church of Greece to, to rectify the problem and to embrace them and end the schism. And so I don't know if he would have said the same thing 10 or 20 or 30 years later. I do think there was a pretty big sea change. I mean, there was a time in the late 50s, early 60s, that they didn't have any more bishops uh, at all. At least many of the old calendars uh, had 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 uh, had lost all their bishops, and they had to go to the church abroad and basically begin again. Uh, so uh, the reality pre-68 and post or 60s and post 60s uh, does play a role in our proper understanding of uh, Elder Hieronymus. I think he's embraced by many as a holy man, if not a, a saint, uh, but certainly a very holy elder. And uh, I always love the story. A story of uh, Elder Euronymous uh, when he comes over. I've said it many times, but he's really uh, made an impression on me when he comes over from the old country in 1920 and he encounters modern Greece and he says, where, where am I? Am I in an Orthodox country? Is this Christian people? Because he hears blasphemy and all this stuff. And so he had lived such an intense spiritual life in the old country in Constantinople and before that in uh, Asia Minor and uh, uh, Cappadocia. Uh, where he was from, I, uh, I forget the village. In any case, it was very in, in, a very exalted life in the in the, in Asia Minor there, and um, he was uh, he was of a high spiritual stature, uh, and friends with saints. So thank God. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, I think that I I'm totally at one with uh, Saint Florio uh, Zervakos. Uh, who said that the calendar change was a drastic error, an expression of a very foreign spirit and mindset in terms of ecclesiology. It needs to be repented of, and there needs to be a return to unity. And this is a ridiculous and awful schism that should never have happened. Uh, but I don't, at the same time, embrace the methodology that was embraced by the old calendarist. I don't think it's patristic. I don't think they're following the saints. They're not in follow, and some of them are not following the saints explicitly, such as uh, the abbot of Sesvigmeno, who rejects the sanctity of Saint Paiso, Saint Porfirio, Saint Jacobus. Um, you know that's a very bad sign. Uh, there's no discernment there. Um, the path of resistance to every heresy uh, is clear, uh, and it's not a mystery. And there are certain tools that we can use. Um, so we need to follow that, follow the saints of our day. St. Paisios ceased commemoration of Patriarch Athanagoras uh, in the 1960s, as did many Athenites. That's not the same as what happened later on with the Monastery of Esfigmenu. It's not the same as the Matthewites and the rest. So there's a, there's a really thin line there that I think is the patristic response in terms of the methodology of, of, of how to deal with all these problems in the 20th century. And there's been a 
you know, few that have walked it and many who have not. And so it's very delicate uh, and takes, I think it takes a lot. It took me a long time with a lot of research and speaking to a lot of people traveling all over Greece and speaking with a variety of people. I went to Etna. I've been, I was with, I was in Jordanville back in the, in the nineties when they were in communion with uh, uh, some of the zealots, uh, the uh, Cyprianites. You know, I, I've talked to a lot, a lot. I went, to, I went to, I met with, briefly with uh, Father Madelemon in 1997 in Boston, uh, when he told me immediately that I needed to depart from where I was, that these saints, these elders I was quoting were not true elders. You know, I, I've heard all this firsthand. And so it took me a long time, though. And, and, and it's difficult to discern all that. Where exactly is the, the royal path? Ultimately, the church has to speak in council, and in council, they're going to lay down the boundaries in this very difficult 20th century that we just passed.